Ukulele Tales, the ukulele podcast with John Atkins. Welcome back to Ukulele Tales. How's it going? Do you remember last week that I asked for a cool nickname that I could give to you, the beautiful listeners of Ukulele Tales? Well, this morning I got a message from listener Wayne Gordon of Geneva in Switzerland, of all places, and he suggested, how about the tailgaters? I love that. It's like a secret little party that only we're invited to. What fun. So welcome, tailgaters, to another episode of Ukulele Tales. And I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. It's a feature-length interview with up-and-coming songstress Abby Lyons. We met up in September of last year at the Los Angeles International Ukulele Festival, and we talked about absolutely everything, including how she got started on YouTube, who her YouTube influences may or may not have been, her classical background, starting on the oboe, writing her first song at the age of 12, and a conversation that we had a couple of years ago, which, to be fair, seems like I totally misremembered, but it sent me, nonetheless, on a spiral of existential despair. And we talk about an absolutely huge project that she has on the go right now, providing the music for the Amazon Prime show The Wheel of Time, which she recorded in her closet. Abby was absolutely lovely to talk to, and in fact, we spoke for a few hours uh, even after we stopped recording, because we just had so much to talk about. Anyway, I'll be back in a bit to tell you all about a new feature of the podcast that I'm looking to introduce in a couple of weeks' time, and how you can be a part of it. But right now, let's get straight into my conversation with Abby Lyons, which starts off with me worrying that I might just be turning into my grandparents. Um, yeah, I just found out like I'm turning into not my parents, but my grandparents. Really? I just found that out. Yeah, I had a headache this afternoon. And I was just like, oh, it's okay. I always travel with a little like sachet of Advil in my wash kit. Yeah. And I've had it in there for, you know, every time I travel. And I went in and I found out it expired in 2017. <laughs> so I've had it for like, I don't know, four or five years or something. Yeah. And uh, I just remember like, that's sort of, like grandparent territory, I think. When you've got stuff <laughs> that expired five years ago, it's not good, you know. <laughs> well, they would probably take the pills sooner though, right? Because they're grandparents. That's true. Old the people, pills. if there's one thing old people like, it's pills. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So how are you doing anyway? I'm good. I'm sleepy today. We were yeah. up pretty late last night. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah. A little um, get together. Yeah. I should have texted you. To ah, it's all good. I fell asleep. <laughs> I'm so jet lagged. I got here like midnight Thursday and then just hardly slept at all. And then last night I crashed so hard. Yeah. Even if you'd like knocked on my door, <laughs> I wouldn't have woken up, I don't think. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So you're here for, well, we're both here for the LA Ukulele Festival. Yes. What were you doing yesterday at the festival? So yesterday I did a performance and a songwriting workshop. And I also helped out with Bernadette's festival work as well. They're cool. okay. play along and strumming. That was today, songs. right? Or um, Yesterday and also today. Yeah. And actually on Friday night, I opened for Andrew and Brittany as oh, well. Oh, you didn't, did you? Mm -hmm. Just like a solo mm -hmm. set? Yes. I'm so sorry I missed that. Um, <laughs> it's all right. I would have come, but <laughs> I was meeting up with uh, with friends. So I'd love to have seen you you doing a, a little solo set. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I did today and yesterday and the day before. Too. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I had plenty of chances to see you. <laughs> I missed every single one. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's but when, okay. When you come to England, I'll catch you. Yeah. Are you coming to England sometime, you think? Or? I don't have any plans yet, but I would love yeah. to. It'll happen, I are, would think. Are It'll there happen. any ukulele festivals out there I should Yeah, check out? there is, for sure. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be invited back to them, but there's definitely some, you know, there's the yeah. Gnuff, the mm -hmm. Grand Northern Ukulele Festival. Mm -hmm. um, that's the main one that I can think of, but I'm sure there's a bunch, you know. Yeah. The thing is, I haven't been in England that long, so I haven't been back there for that long, so right. I'm not super up on what's going on at the moment. Sure. But, uh, but if I hear of anything, I'll let you know. About it. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. But you don't need to come to the festivals. You should be touring your own stuff, right? I know. Yeah, this is the this is the thing that's been on my mind like this past few days is like how to you know book the festivals, book things that are not necessarily just ukulele related, but also like just original music and getting yeah the songs out there more. Yeah, because I think that's what some of the other people here do. They're not just yeah. on like the festival circuit. They're 
touring right. their own songs. They've got their own kind of, I know, their own thing going on. Right. Yeah. And, and you need to be doing that, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. In the process of figuring that out, I guess. And I need to talk to those people some more. We had some yeah. good conversations last night, like Brittany and I. And, yeah. Yeah. Do you have like a manager or an agent or anything? No. You don't? No. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I want to ask you about. For sure. Um, about your music, your songwriting. Uh, but the first thing I've got to, I've got to say this to you. Um, I met you at NAM. Yes. Was it like, I don't know, two, three years ago? Maybe less than that, actually. Two or three years ago. 2020. Right? Was it 2020? Okay. Yeah. But... Well, that would have been the lockdown year, wouldn't it? Was yeah. it on then? Oh, yes. It okay. was in January of 2020. January of 2020. Okay. That's why my memory is good because the lockdown happened right after. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you said something to me. I don't know if you remember it at all, mm. but it genuinely sent me into some thing of a sort of existential despair spiral oh no and i don't <laughs> don't take it and like i say don't take it in a bad way oh no what was it basically i uh you said something like um i used to watch you when i was a little kid no and, uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's not true because um well i watched you when i was like 21 i think oh really yeah like, okay so yeah for all these years i thought you meant like because i thought you meant when you were like sort of about 12 or something right <laughs> no 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 because <laughs> it's fair enough because i've been doing it for like 11 years like next week i've been well, doing this for 11 years well i'm older than i look i'm 30 so that oh, math, kinda, that math okay. adds up fine okay because you, <laughs> you're right because i genuinely thought you were about like 19 or something <laughs> So I just kind of thought, oh, when I was like a little, when you were like a little kid, mm -hmm. you used to watch me. And then you said, and then like, um, because you said like, I sort of inspired you to get into YouTube, I think, right? To some degree. Well, or, no. Have I completely misremembered this whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's see. I mean, I guess when I tell people, like the people that I watched a, like a little bit on YouTube were you and Cynthia Lynn. But the truth is like, I've had a lot of um, background in classical music. Yeah. So okay. like I figured out a lot of stuff on the ukulele before, but I like to tell people like, oh, I watched this people, this person's oh. video, this person's video. Cause okay. it's true. Yeah. I learned a lot from you guys too, but mm. um, a lot of it was like figuring it out on my own. And I feel like saying that is a little more like, Oh, like look at yeah. me! I can do all these things. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think you meant that I'd like taught you how to play the ukulele, mm. but I thought it was something sort of, um, like inspired you to kind of do your own YouTube channel or something. But I think I was inspired by like Dodi. Oh, okay. Later on, too. Yeah. Wait, hold on though. Okay, maybe I told you like when I was creating tutorials for the first time, I definitely like imitated your tutorials. Oh, okay, okay. I like looked at what you did and then just like copied it okay. and like not much has changed i like have kept your um you know the format that you created yeah. on my channel too and i stole your intro which what like grab your ukulele like, stuff or... so grab your ukulele and then it like appears out of nowhere and oh, then i was okay. getting the comments like yeah. you copied the ukulele teacher <laughs> i wouldn't have thought anyone would even notice but i know yeah. But I, I think I did that for like two videos total and then I kept getting the comments and I was like, okay, I have to come up with my yeah, own thing. Yeah, you, you develop your own style, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, but that's but so just... funny because, uh, yeah, I just kind of thought, it just made me think, because for me, because I'm as old as I look, which is very old. Yeah. And I just... <laughs> you don't look that old. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. But I, I've been doing this, like I said, like 11 years. But for yeah. me, that's like the blink of an eye. Like I was already an adult when I started doing it. Yeah. But I thought you were like 20. So when you said I was watching when I was a kid, I thought you meant like 11 or something. <laughs> and I've just been sort of thinking, wow, I've like sort of inspired the people who are now going to overtake me and like, <laughs> you know, like be way more successful and better than me. So uh <laughs> and and they're you know younger and everything so anyway that's a weird thing to think about but <laughs> it seems like i've completely misremembered and misinterpreted it all but... maybe so but now that we're yeah i'm like remembering other yeah. components that probably were interpreted that yeah. way i guess yeah. fair enough okay cool yeah. well anyway it's nice to like kind of clear that up a little bit sure yeah. i mean i think i saw i might have even seen your videos too before i had a ukulele i can't quite remember but yeah. definitely like you know First. Well, I get that because, like, sometimes I'll do a song from like 2014 or something yeah. and think, hey, I'm doing some really modern stuff now. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get a comment and someone will say, oh, I remember this from when I was in school or when oh, I was a little no. kid. Or a... <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's for me, that's like a song that's just come out, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. But for someone else, like I said, if they're 14, that's half their lifetime away. So, yeah. 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 But it, it goes by so quickly. Yeah, uh, it really does. Yeah. So you said you started young playing yeah. music. How young yeah. were you? Um, my mom started teaching me piano when I was four. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. My son just turned four and I'm teaching him the piano. Yes. <laughs> well, he's got a little keyboard. Yes. When I say teaching him, I mean, I taught him happy birthday, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And then I came in the next day and he's playing something completely different. Oh. And I said, did I teach you that? He's like, no. Oh. And he's just picking out these tunes on his own, like with one finger. <laughs> but he's like, he can properly pick out these uh, these tunes. That's awesome. But how did Amazing. you, yeah, how, well, thank you. How did your mum teach you? Did... So I think all in all, it was aggravating to teach us, like me and my siblings, how to play because we just didn't want to learn from our mom. Yeah. <laughs> so she taught us for a couple of years and then she started, um, she and my dad, I mean, they had us take piano lessons at a, like, there was a children's prep, like a college prep program nearby, um, yeah. a university. Were they musical then, your parents? Yes. Yeah. yeah. My mom is a classically trained singer, and she plays organ and piano, and my dad is a composer. Oh, But really? um, okay. his main, his career was in um, computer programming. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're, um, so you started off on the piano. Yes. And you said you had some other classical uh, yeah. training. What else did you play? Yeah, in fourth grade, I started playing the oboe. The oboe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you mm-hmm. still play that at all? Or? Um, Here and there, not too much. Um, But yeah, I, I majored in the oboe in college. And, oh, yeah? But yeah. I developed a lot of hand injuries and like just, yeah, playing injuries. From playing? From yeah. playing, yeah. Yeah. What, like sort of uh, arthritis-y kind of stuff or something or...? Could have been. I never got it like diagnosed yeah. or anything, but just a lot of pain, like um, yeah. wrists, like thumb, arms. Oh wow, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I think from the stress, actually. Of- really, yeah. Because when you're playing at a high level, right, you've got to really mm-hmm. not like the film Whiplash or something. Have you seen? Whiplash oh, I did or... see that. Yeah, where well, the guys are screaming at him to play it better or something, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was an interesting movie. Yeah. <laughs> and what, um, so what? Did, was that a master's, did you say, uh, when you, in oboe? I did a bachelor's in oboe performance. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you got a music master's as well? Yeah, I got a master's in music composition at CalArts. Composition, is that songwriting? Or... No, it wasn't, no. Um, but CalArts is um, a little more experimental in nature, so I ended up doing, like, classical composition, like, that sort of stuff, but then also songwriting and, like, fusing the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you taught yourself songwriting. Yeah, I guess so. I started like I wrote my first song when I was twelve. Um, my piano teacher always had us like composing little stuff in the in the prep books. Oh, and that's nice. Yeah. I did a few like songwriting workshops here and there. I definitely yeah. learned a lot from my composition professor at CalArts too. Yeah, yeah. That that taught me a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What when you're writing a song? No, wait, that's a really cliched question. But, like, um, I was going to say, so how do you do it? But, I mean, how? what is your process, I guess, mm-hmm. for it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can vary. Um, I think usually, for me, the lyrics come first. Like, yeah. the lyrics are the idea. Um, in the, I, I feel like the lyrics are maybe the hardest part for me. So that's where I start. But, um, uh. Then after that, like going to the chord progression, the melody, that's usually the order I'll go. So lyrics, chord progression, melody. Yeah. And it's kind of like you come up with like the first two or three lines of the lyrics and then you start adding it in and then you take a break and like go back to the lyrics. And then, you know, it's it's kind of like pieces together. Yeah. 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 I'm really surprised to hear you say that the lyrics are the hardest part for you because your stuff is all about your lyrics. It sounds like I've been listening to like your... um, some of your stuff on Apple Music, and mm-hmm. uh, it's really um, confessional, I guess. I don't mean like you're confessing to stuff. I mean, yeah. it's like a diary or something. It, it feels like it's sort of talking about what you're going through or been through or thinking about. Yeah, yeah. So how, how do you do that? Do you keep a diary or something? Or? Um, No, not at the moment. Well, okay, I'll sometimes, yeah, I'll type things out on the computer. Like, just that's my diary. But I don't usually use that stuff in the music. Um. Those songs that are out right now, I feel like I wrote them a little bit differently because I would just like click the record button on my phone and then sing 
and say lyrics and play all at the same time. Oh, yeah. Like a voice and, memo kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And just have it go for like five to seven minutes or so and see like whatever came out. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, And then go back to those later and like edit. Yeah. Edit it down to like a two or three minute song. So yeah. that was a little bit of a different process. And That's maybe... for the I'm Not Famous album. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. A lot of the songs were yeah. written like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and where did you record that? Um, I recorded it at my friend Eric Lloyd's um, recording studio in, in yeah. Los Angeles. Uh, is it, are you doing all the instruments or um, did you have like a band or anything? Uh, most of them. Um, so it was actually, yeah, the idea was to have it mostly be me because right. it was kind of a budget project. Too, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> have it mostly be vocals and ukulele, piano. Um, my friend Hannah played the bass, my other friend, actually I had a few bass players, John Carlo, Barrett, um, and a drummer too for some of the, the drummer, songs. yeah, okay, okay. And Eric even threw in some cajon on some recordings. Nice, okay. But I think it was about, oh, and my, and my friend JP also guitar, so it was a handful of people, but it was, um, small. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but most of it is you, though. Yes. Hello again, tailgaters. I like that. I really do. Isn't Abby great? A very wise head on some young shoulders and very open and honest to talk to. It's so great that someone so genuinely talented is getting some really good breaks and able to support herself as a musician. And you know what? I have to confess, I still haven't checked out the Wheel of Time yet, but I absolutely must do that. Isn't that awesome? Providing the soundtrack to a TV show? What an incredible achievement. Well done, Abby. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying the episode. There is going to be a bonus five or ten minutes up on the Patreon page in a day or two, available to my Patreon tailgaters. So do check out the Patreon page if you haven't already. Patreon.com slash Teacher. Because as well as bonus content that you won't hear in the main show, including extra chat with Tyler from Ten Thumbs, James Hill, Christopher Davis Shannon, and Abby Lyons, it also helps me to keep the show ticking over, paying the bills of travel and the production cost. So if you can throw just a few dollars my way, I would seriously appreciate it. But if you can't, don't sweat it. For me, the single most important thing is that people get to hear these great conversations that I'm having. So much like my YouTube channel, the plan is for this podcast to remain free forever. But if you do like it and you want to help support it, even just a little... Or if you just can't get enough and you want some bonus extra content, then please do check out patreon.com slash teacher. Anyway, we'll get back to Abby in just a moment. But first, I wanted to let you know about an idea I was mulling over with somebody just a few days ago. And it's a way to get you guys directly involved in the show. This podcast is called Ukulele Tales, right? So there's no reason why I should just be talking to, I guess you'd call them ukulele celebs after all every single one of us probably has a ukulele and i'm sure some of you guys have some really great stories to tell but what i specifically want to know about is your ukuleles tell me everything about them i want to know what type of ukulele you've got how long you've had it for who gave it to you where did it come from why did you choose that particular ukulele do you know any of the history behind it do you have any interesting stories about it I would love to know about the history of your ukuleles. Now, I'll make some general posts calling for contributions to this over the next week or two on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and everything. But in the meantime, if you're listening to this bit and you have something interesting to tell me about your ukulele, then go ahead and drop me a line. I'm the ukulele teacher on Facebook and uke teacher on Twitter and Instagram. Or you could even send me an email to uke teacher at grabyouryuke.com. Send me photos, send me info, send me some stories, send me whatever you think me and the other tailgaters might find interesting about your ukulele. And hopefully there might even be some interesting stories I could read out in the future, especially as I have a couple of shorter interviews from last year's NAM coming up. I had been thinking about stitching two or three together to make a full-size show, but I think this might be an even better idea. I can't wait to hear from you guys. By the way, when I was typing up some notes earlier on, my computer automatically corrected 
tail gator to tail hater. So perhaps that's a name for the people out there who don't love this podcast. Are you a tail gator or a tail hater? Hopefully a tail gator. Anyway, send me your ukulele history and I'll do some digging of my own. And I really, really look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. But right now, though, let's jump back into my conversation with Abby Lyons. My favourite song on your album is uh, Morning Birds. Yeah, uh, yeah, I yeah. love the sound of it. And um, Thank you. even lyrically, I think it's more... I'm trying to compliment you, but it might sound like not a compliment. But it sounds like one of the more mature tracks, oh, like lyrically on the on the album. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny because like yeah, I guess Morning Doves and My Car, the last two at the end, are the ones that I felt like the least sure about. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I wasn't sure. I don't know if the message was like um, either coming across clearly enough or 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 what it was. I don't know. Yeah. But, but yeah, I'm so I'm glad no, you I liked like that it. one. Yeah. 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 Um, so, and, um, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Or just, uh, that was inspired by, um, there were, there were morning doves, like, making a nest outside of the music store where I used to work. Okay. Um, but the baby, the baby one might have been eaten by a hawk or something oh, like no. that. Yeah. And the music repairman found the mother just by itself, and he said that he looked at her, and she looked back, and, um... He cried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was sad. Yeah, that but is sad. <laughs> that <it> was... <laughs> is sad, actually. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it was inspired by those dubs who were there, but not necessarily that story about them. Let me ask you about uh, songwriting workshops, because that's what mm -hmm. you were doing yesterday. Yeah, right? yeah. What, what is that? Um, obviously, I don't, you don't need to tell me what you're doing, but like, what does that sort of entail for you? Like, do people start with questions, or do you give someone... What, what do you do in them? Yeah. Well, yeah, I can tell yeah. you what we yeah. did. Um, basically, what we've done these past couple of times is write a song on the spot, like, together. As a class? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, um, um, we've started with the chord progression, like, take suggestions of chords. It's kind of a combination of, like, working together, but also I'll, like, have to put them together, like, yeah. put the chord progression together myself, too, with some... Yeah, right. Prior knowledge, I guess. Because if people are just calling out completely random chords, it's mm -hmm. going to sound yeah. pretty dreadful, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, and it's, it's like 30 yeah. minutes, so it's um, hard to explain, you know, a whole music theory lesson. But we'll come up with a chord progression together, um, then go to the lyrics, and I'll okay. ask them to share a text message, their latest text oh, message. Oh, really? Okay, that's yeah. clever, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, like, um, people shout out some, some texts. Some are, like, funny, some are more serious. I like to go like more on the serious side. Um, the one that was in yesterday's festival was um, Hey Love, I'm in Milan. And then oh, okay. after that, we took, okay, like let's come up with some rhymes for Milan and then write down a whole bunch of rhymes. And then we go backwards from the rhymes and come up with some lines together with That's that. And what does rhyme with Milan? I'm, they had I'm some really good. Oh, I yeah. know I couldn't think yeah. of anything, but they had really good suggestions. They said um, "gone," "move on," um, well, "song." I guess yeah. that wasn't one of theirs. But see, we would say Milan in England anyway. Oh that's, yeah, so, Milan. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah that's but, probably. Who. So that <laughs> Milan song "gone" doesn't work in an English accent. Oh yeah. <laughs> when yeah. we come up with like flan and clan and you're right, span, steal like span or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and they don't quite rhyme. I think Mil Milan gone. I guess yeah. No, it's close. So yeah. Well, you can get away with it if you're a good singer, anyway, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Which you are, by the way. Your voice is really, uh, oh, really good. Um, Thank you. I've been trying all day. I feel like you've got like a voice twin somewhere, you know, like someone with the same voice. And yeah. I think it's in my iTunes library huh. and I cannot figure out who it is. Well, some, they were playing some music at the end of the festival yesterday, just on the speakers. And I thought it sounded like me. And then my mom came afterwards and was like, is this you? Oh, and yeah? I was like, no. <laughs> and then another person asked like, are they playing your song on the speakers? I'm like, no, that's not me. But I thought it sounded like me. See, I'm just, I'm like, I've been <laughs> racking my brain. And I thought it was kind of like, 
maybe uh, like Lisa Loeb or something, but I don't mm -hmm. think it's quite her. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I don't know. But you have you been compared to anyone else, or do you have any sort of vocal influences or anything? I love Joni Mitchell. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Dodie Clark on oh, YouTube. Oh, Dodie, yeah, 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 yeah. Have you met her at all or worked with her or anything? No, I no. haven't. That would be cool. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Is she still going? I assume she's probably still going, right? Yeah, she's still yeah. posting. Um, I think she's uh, more focused on touring. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. like less frequently, but still yeah. posting. I think she became big sort of off YouTube, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I remember watching her when she was like a little kid. Oh, really? So, yeah, just like playing ukulele in her bed and sometimes her little sister would be in it and stuff. Oh, and yeah. I thought that was really cool. And then I remember yeah. like sort of like looked away for five years and suddenly she's like a massive pop star or something. Yeah. You know? yeah. She was really yeah. a big inspiration because I had just graduated from school and then didn't know what I was going to do. Like, what's the plan? I wanted to become like a, you know, singer songwriter, get my music heard. Um, and then I found her YouTube channel and it was like the first time where I was like, oh, I see what someone I feel I see what they're doing. I feel like I could just imitate that and like see yeah. if that works for me as well. Yeah. And is it working? I mean like um, you said you did work at a music store mm -hmm. but are you kind of, is, is music now, are you supporting yourself with your music or is yes. it sort of an expensive hobby or you're, you're supporting yourself? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Okay cool. Yeah so yeah. it's worked in some aspects I feel like because um, I've definitely like grown my YouTube channel, I get to perform and like um, um, I'm making a living doing the music, um, oh, brilliant. Brilliant. but yeah. I guess my, my main goal is to like do it through the original songs and that's still my goal and I'm still going to keep working towards that. It's like not quite where I want it to be, but yeah. it's definitely getting heard. So that's, that's good. It, it is. Who, who's yeah. hearing it? Like, I mean, uh, not, I mean, how, how are people hearing it? Just um, through YouTube or? Yeah. YouTube, Spotify, mm -hmm. I like perform around Chicago and Oh, cool. Okay. That sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 And you were telling me yesterday you're on TV as well, right? Your music, I mean. Yes. Or, yeah. um, my singing is on, um, some TV shows, um, and a movie that's going to come out. Um, the, the main TV show is like the wheel of time. Yeah. On Amazon prime. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just, go I just Googled it now. So I'm afraid I haven't seen it myself. I just read about it, but, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> uh, but I will have a look for it. Is it like, yeah. uh, where does it come in? Is it sort of heavily featured or? Yeah. It's like spread out throughout the whole series. So really you... more than one of your, one of your songs or a couple of them? Or? Um, it's music by Lauren Balfe. So it's just my singing okay, on, the, okay. on the show. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. Really cool. I mean, like, really cool. And you, yeah. especially as you said, you don't have an agent or anything. Right. And that just happened uh, kind of randomly because I, I had a friend in LA who works for Lauren Balfe and yeah. he's part of the Hans Zimmer studio. Um, and we met up for coffee just, just to like, I just wanted to see her. Um, yeah. She went to my undergrad even, so in Illinois Wesleyan, and we were both out in L.A. then. Um, and I told her I was working for Fender, that like, came up in the conversation. Okay, And yeah. then a few weeks later, they needed a ukulele player for their film score. So I went to the studio to record the ukulele, and then while I was there, they asked if I could also do some vocals on the oh, spot. Yeah. So... I did that and that was like the one gig and I thought that would be it. Um, but then they started sending me more work for vocals. Yeah. And Lauren just really loves my voice. Yeah. Said. Yeah. So, and then one of the things just happened to be um, the Wheel of Time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, so where were you recording this stuff? In, in my closet. No way. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say they like flew you out to a studio in <laughs> LA or something. <laughs> Um, the first, the very first one was at the studio in Santa Monica. Yeah. And yeah. then everything else has just been um, remote, remote. And do they recording. know it's in your closet? Or, uh, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to give away any industry secrets or anything. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, I know that's right. what like voiceover people do, especially like in the COVID times or whatever. You just sort of build a little like uh, 
yeah, closet studio, basically. Yeah, and I didn't quite know what I was doing. I was just really fortunate that my closet at the time was a walk-in closet with carpet with two racks on the side, so my clothes were hanging like yeah. this, and it was like the perfect little sound space. That sounds good. Yeah, in England, we don't have those walk-in closets, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that wouldn't really work over there. But I know in, in America, they do have the big sort of rooms like that. That's really cool. And then yeah. you're recording it what with... Um, I guess you have like a good mic or something. Or? I I honestly didn't have a very good really? mic, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I like do a now. Yeti Blue or something. Or, uh... It was like it was something that my old boyfriend just let me have. He like yeah. I don't even know what it was exactly. Like, Into what like Garage Band or something or. Um, it must have been in Garage Band at first. Yeah, I have Logic Pro now. Yeah. Um. Now I have a really good microphone. Good. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. if you have the great voice, you don't, I mean, obviously you kind of need, it's, there's got to be like certain standard for TV shows and stuff. Right. But if you have like a great voice, then it doesn't matter so much because you sound great anyway, you know. So. And and I think it's more of the space too. It's like yeah. microphone, but also, you know, yeah, yeah. the room. And do you add like um, plugins and effects and stuff to your voice? Or? No, I just have to do the recording and send it. To and then them they'll and master they... it up and everything and yeah. mix it and things. They yeah. they mix it really good. Yeah. Wow, I'm gonna have to check this show out. Yeah. Like, uh, I, like I said, I only just heard of it, but it's a fantasy sh a fantasy show, is it or something? Yeah, it's honestly I didn't even know what it was <laughs> either. Um, I just like send the stuff and then I don't like didn't expect anything to happen with it. But it's like a the Wheel of Time was a book series that. I think the first book was written in 92 and yeah. friends of mine like grew up reading the book oh, really? okay. and I wasn't yeah. allowed to like tell anyone that I was on the show. So they were like talking about, oh, Wheel of Time is coming out like yeah. in a few months. And, and you're like, oh, I might check it I was out. like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm also really excited for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that must have been so cool. That's one of the cool <laughs> things about YouTube that I found. Like maybe YouTube isn't always um, the most sort of lucrative platform yeah. or the most uh whatever thing but it leads to so many things like mm -hmm. just from doing youtube i've had like these amazing opportunities mm -hmm. off youtube right. and it seems like that's what's happening for you and for others as well i think you know? yeah yeah because yeah. you just never know who might be watching your video when you put yep. something out there yeah definitely have you had um any like celebrities or anything tweet you or message you or anything or say hey i love your stuff or Hmm. Well, I feel like you guys are kind of celebrities to me. Oh, don't, don't be silly. <laughs> like you and Cynthia and Bernadette. Oh, come on. But no. um, I don't know. I mean, like the off the top of my head, like the Mean Girls Broadway production shared one of my covers like, oh, yeah? years ago. That was really cool. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not sure who else. Um, I'll have to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess, like, mm, the, a cover I posted of, like, The Best Day of My Life on Instagram. Do you know that song? The... Uh, yeah, the American Authors. Yeah, yeah. That's actually one of my favorite songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they left a comment and, like, oh, that's just, so like cool. this is yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. They didn't leave a comment <laughs> on my cover of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think, the thing that made my Instagram channel start to grow. Ah, cool. Okay. And you're still uh, doing Instagram and stuff? Or? Not as much lately, but... Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm glad, you know. Yeah. No, it, yeah. No, I mean, like, I'm just kind of over it myself, honestly. Really? Like, I'm yeah. Fine. Yeah. Like, I'm, I, like, try to get back into it, and then I'm like, eh. It just, it becomes... Like, okay. Full, to do it, like, properly... Um, it's a full-time job, so kind of. So much work, yeah. And I just don't have the interest, I think, to... I know. I used to be really, really interested in it a few years ago. Yeah. I just, like, something snapped and I, like, yeah. stopped. Maybe yeah. it was when they got rid of the likes, honestly. The likes? Oh, you mean yeah. you can see how many likes you're getting or not getting or something? Yeah. 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 But you can put that back. You can. Now you can. And yeah. did you, or... I uh... think it just automatically went back. Oh, okay, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I was talking about this with someone recently, but all of these social media things, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, uh, uh, it feels like a few years ago it was just, you put something out, people would see it and like it or not like it. Now it's like you put something out and the people, that, even people who follow you might never see it. Yeah. They might never see it unless you pay to boost it or if you post 15 times a day or follow whatever their algorithm is that particular week. Yeah. So, I mean, even me, like I'm following all these people, you know, certain people that I like, 
and I still might never see their thing. And then occasionally I'll see something, and it'll say posted four days ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I love this person. Why didn't they show me yeah, that post? So, um, yeah. yeah, I'm over it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, for me at least, I think it's um, like I used to check like the likes all the time, the views, yeah. how's it doing, and like compare how is this person's video doing? Oh, like, for sure. Yeah, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm all over that kind of thing. I, and I, like, now I don't even, I don't look at the likes. If I do, sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not doing as well as it used right. to do, but that's okay. <laughs> that's how I've been feeling. Like, it sent me into a funk, honestly. I was just yeah. sort of like, I, what am I doing wrong? Why do people hate me now? Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm sort of like, no, my self-worth shouldn't be tied into my popularity or otherwise on social media right right you know, so yeah because also it doesn't really translate into making a living out exactly. of music too exactly yeah yeah although i i get i mean i and i i think you're right but isn't it part of how you get your message out there though yeah it's true so it's, yeah. it's sort of like the combo I yeah it's it's hard <laughs> because i have to say my self-worth is more than this yeah. but then also I do need people to see my stuff if I want to keep making money. So yeah, yeah. it's kind of hard, but yeah. Yes. But yes. I have just decided kind of over the last year or so, um, just my family is more important. My mm-hmm. home life is more important. And yeah. if I remember to post something, cool. If it gets a lot of likes, cool. If it doesn't, that's okay, you know. And just try and, and if someone else is doing better than me, that's also fine, you know. Right. So, uh, but it's easier said than done, right, isn't it? You know, yeah. 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 Uh, back to you, anyway. <laughs> back to the, uh, back to Abby. <laughs> but you kind of grew up, I mean, I feel like 10, no, more than 10 years ago. I don't know, before YouTube, there yeah. were other ways of uh, building a music career. Mm. But now, I think that is how you get your music out there. If you want to be discovered, I think YouTube... Or maybe so just social media in general is uh, is a way of being found, right? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because um, a lot of people are still in that mindset, like like what you're saying, like oh, I need a manager, or mm-hmm. like I need a record label, and now now record labels are sometimes just going for the people who have like the large followings already, yeah. and then you're like, well, do I need these people then? Yeah, once, once you already yeah. have the following. Um, I think it's good also because there's a lot of room for like independent artists and maybe even like more of like middle earners, if that makes sense. Yeah. Middle class. It's more possible to make like a middle class earning doing music nowadays than maybe it was in the past where it's either like no, no earnings and like tons of Or like a millionaire kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a nice middle, you can make a living, like a comfortable Mm -hmm. living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what what was the question again? I, I think I was just whinging about something, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, but I guess, yeah, I feel like like we have more control over it now since yeah. since it is possible to like grow a following on your own so easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you um, enjoy playing live? Uh, yeah. You do. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. really love it. Yeah. Yeah. And what sort of size venues are you doing? Mm, I guess like mm, maybe there would be like 30, 40 people per okay. show or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But, but you're doing a bunch of them, like loads of them or? Um, I should be doing more. I've been doing like, trying to do like once a month. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah. that's my goal, like when I get home, because I, yeah, I'd like to do all these Start festivals. Start booking some more uh, shows and travel. stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a balance because I guess like, YouTube does take a lot of time. Yeah. So does yeah. like Patreon and everything. Yeah. Um, oh, you're on Patreon. Mm-hmm. What are you doing on Patreon? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, lead sheets and okay, like live events. So oh like, yeah, yeah. Lessons, but also like uh, I have a songwriter group on there yeah. too. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. You need more um, uh, revenue streams nowadays, don't you? yeah yeah so that's that's one of them i guess for you. Yeah, yeah patreon's yeah. the main thing because yeah. youtube um is nowhere near like enough to <laughs> yeah right yeah 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 um but just to like uh, i guess like i'm trying to figure out if i want to move in this direction of like performing live more it's probably going to take a lot of time and energy and focus like i think like for sure it will and then 
what do I do about the Patreon and YouTube and stuff, like how much time can I spend on that, but that's where I'm earning my living right now mostly, so it's like... Yeah, yeah. How, how to balance how it How to all. juggle it all. And right, then also yeah. like, you know, I don't have a boyfriend right now, but... But you're looking. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, of course, you got to have, you got to balance all this stuff, haven't you? You know, I mean, when I had like a, a real job, um, they always talk about like work-life balance, you know, you don't just want to be sort of in the office all day or... Yeah. Um, and But it's the same. People think, oh, you're a musician, you can do what you want to do you know, you don't have to worry about anything, but you've got to have a life as well, right? Yeah, and I can get kind of intense about it, like, just working all yeah, the time. I can imagine, yeah. Like, yeah. I went to a party a few months ago, and someone asked me, like, what are your hobbies outside of uh, music? And I was like, uh... <laughs> 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 I meditate, that's what I said, but... Um, meditate? Meditation? Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, see, I, I totally relate to that, because um, maybe we're kind of similar like this, but all my hobbies... I've just focused on them so much they've kind of become my job, you know? Yeah. Like YouTube started off as a hobby or a joke even. Mm -hmm. and, it became, and I just, you know, plowed through it. It's, now it's just all I've done for like 10, 11 years actually now. Mm -hmm. And um, before that I was doing uh, wrestling announcing. That oh, was I like, heard about that. Did you? Okay. So actually someone said that you're like, what is it called? Like, uh, like an MC or a well, commentator. They just said, they mentioned the wrestling thing. And I was yeah. like, what? John used to be a wrestler? No, I wasn't a wrestler. <laughs> I was the guy, the ring announcer, the guy yeah. who announced the fights, yeah. <laughs> That's really cool, though. Yeah, yeah. I love that at all. Yeah. Well, know. how did the um, the pandemic affect you, you know, the last couple of years? Um, it was good. I actually really liked staying at home. Um, I, um, like, started meditating at the start of the pandemic. Oh, yeah, okay. And that was really helpful. Um, yeah. I feel like I learned a lot just about myself and, like, like, I don't know, you're not always paying attention to, like, what's going on on the inside. So yeah. just to check in on that is really helpful. Um, I also, uh, I, I guess, like, the pandemic happened not too long after a breakup I had with, um, like, a five-year relationship. So okay. that gave me time to just stay at home and, like, process all of that, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then other than that, I, like, worked all the time. <laughs> right, like, like writing and stuff or um, recording music and things? Making making videos. Oh, you know, yeah, right, YouTube stuff. Yep, okay, yeah. Back to the YouTube yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. I just took it as an opportunity to, like, stay at home and, like, constantly make videos and, yeah. Yeah. That sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. But I guess you had to stop doing live performances and things for a bit. Yeah, but I wasn't really doing much um, live stuff out in L.A. And, um... A lot of that was, like, a lot of the places in L.A. are kind of, like, pay-to-play sorts of things. Right. Okay. I guess oh, you were living like... in L.A. at the time. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Because okay. you're in Chicago now. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, so it didn't really cut out too much live stuff. And actually, the job that I had was kind of coming to a close anyway. I actually was, like, um, I knew I needed to find a new job. And I had a two-week or a week trip plan to go to Spain and I was like okay after I get back from Spain I'm gonna find a new job um and then the day that I flew home from Spain like then that day was like when Trump was closing the borders and I like got in like right before I mean I would have been able I to think come back going anyway. as a citizen right yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would have been fine yeah. but then that's when the lockdown and everything yeah. came down so I didn't end up having to find a new job after all how do you mean? I don't get it. Um, was... Because <laughs> because <laughs> during the pandemic, that's when my Patreon account like grew. Oh, I get a you. Lot. I see what you mean. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I thought you meant I... like um, they just carried on paying you or something. But, yeah. I left that part out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I also started some private students, and yeah, that's when I like kind of finally figured out how to make a full time living doing doing music. What are you teaching your private students? Songwriting and ukulele. Yeah. Okay, ukulele. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I haven't really asked you much about the ukulele, and considering it's a ukulele podcast, <laughs> maybe I should move on to that now. Yeah. How yeah. did you start, or when, why, and how did you start playing the ukulele? Um, I started, I think, when I was like around twenty-one. When I that's kind of late, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I had played some guitar in sixth grade, so I knew a little bit of yeah. this like fretwork. Um, but it was just because like 
three of my friends got ukuleles. Like, first person got a ukulele, and I was like, oh, that seems like fun. He was writing songs with it. Second person also started writing songs with ukulele. I was like, I think I should really get a ukulele. And then my best friend Eileen got a ukulele, and then that was like the final thing. I was like, okay, I'm getting a ukulele. I told my parents I wanted a ukulele for my birthday. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. I got one of those diamond head ukuleles. It was only like $35 because I didn't want to like... Like a super cheap one. Right? Yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't know if I'm really going to stick with this. So I just want to get a cheap one. And what do you have now? Uh, a lot of oh, yeah, ones. Oh right. yeah. Like a whole bunch. Yeah. <laughs> what's your favorite? What, what's your sort of go-to ukulele? Um, I have a really nice one from Enya that I like a lot. It's a concert size and it's just really comfortable and the tone is super nice. Yeah. I got one from Ohana this weekend that I think I'm going to play a lot too. Oh, cool. Okay. It's yeah. the same size, but it's got an EQ, which okay. the Enya one doesn't have. Yeah. yeah. Good for recording then, right? Um, for a live performance, really, because um, oh, yeah, okay. you can like mic up the ukulele when you're playing live, but there's sometimes a lot of feedback and yeah. it just doesn't work well, very also, well. Also, you can't move around when you're mic'd up. That's true. You? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's good. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, what about the Fender? Do you have a Fender uke? Because um, you said you were working for them. Right. I used to. I gave it to my dad. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. <laughs> it was a good size for him, and I wasn't playing it very much anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did the uh, thing with Fender come about? So I, um, um, at CalArts, they would send out like a listing of jobs for alumni. Yeah. And there was one day they sent out a job listing for a non-disclosed music company um, looking for a ukulele teacher for, yeah. for camera. And it also said like, I guarantee you've heard of this company. They're in every single store but they couldn't say like what it was for. Yeah. And they wanted a short video of like singing and teaching Riptide, which oh, right, I, okay. yeah. I didn't know that song. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, it was, it actually like coordinated with um, the start of my YouTube channel too. I made like four or five videos already and like start was starting to feel more comfortable on camera because yeah. I was really camera shy. I didn't like, talking on camera it's actually so like kind of hard to talk on camera yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and so i just like recorded myself teaching riptide and singing and um made kind of a really goofy video because they also wanted someone like with personality right okay so <laughs> i acted like really silly in the yeah. whole video but yeah i got an email i think a couple of days later from from fender and i was yeah. like whoa I can't believe I sent that video to Fender and that they liked it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then I had to go in and audition at their studio and just do the same thing, like teach. Is that time. in LA or? It, at the time, it was in yeah, it was in Frogtown, LA. Okay. I think they've switched now. They're in Hollywood now. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 So I just went and auditioned there, like got a new outfit and like I practiced every day. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And mm. I um, was like talking to myself in my bedroom in front of the mirror and I didn't want my roommates to overhear but I was like it's fine it's for Fender yeah 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 and how long did that last for um I worked with them probably up until up until like I moved out of LA so yeah. what is that like a couple of years or something or? um I think I started working for them in 2017 and so like till 2021 i guess wow like four cool years okay so. yeah 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 and um hopefully i'll still get to do some shoots with them in yeah. the future because they still like me so good much. yeah see they that's like it. that's what i was saying about like youtube leading to other opportunities yeah but that well i guess it did but not from the youtube channel it was more just yeah the, but even just the experience yeah. of like filming and talking on camera yeah sort of you had that confidence or that experience i guess you know yes yeah Actually, I just remembered um, the producer told me that they even contacted you about doing the Fender stuff. No. No? I didn't get a... I must have not seen that email. Oh, maybe. I was going to say, <laughs> I, I'd have jumped at the chance to do that. Oh, well, maybe they, <laughs> maybe they said they thought about it. Yeah. Hmm. I think they were interested in both you and Cynthia. Oh, But man. I guess they didn't reach out. Well, may, the, okay, maybe I'll they, tell you something. Yeah. I, in probably around that time, I set up my own website and my own, like, sort of business email address and this is when I have like a massive following and stuff yeah and basically kind of 
the month that I set it up, I just got hundreds of emails. And there's still over a hundred that I've just mm. never read. I've never even opened them. Mm. I can't mm -hmm. delete them. Maybe was, I've never even opened them. Maybe so I do have low level anxiety that I've missed out on some massive opportunities from that. Aww. But um, yeah, my, whenever I get down <laughs> to my inbox, there's always 82 unread emails mm -hmm. that I cannot and will not ever delete, but also will never read. Mm -hmm. So maybe one of them was from Fender. Maybe. You know, I'd like to think so. <laughs> Yeah. Man, what a shame. But but I'm glad you got it. You know, you deserved it and you did a great job. Thank and, you. you know, if it wasn't meant to be for me, then it wasn't meant to be. I've had other cool things happen. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's really cool that you got it. Yeah. So what, what are your plans now? What are you kind of aiming for? Mm-hmm. Um, when I go home, I'm going to record a third album. Yeah. Um, Is it written already or? Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, great. I have enough for two albums actually. So yeah. I'm a little. I want to record the third one, fourth one, record music videos for them, um, just start performing live more. Like I really liked this experience, like with the festivals. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like hitting up more festivals. I think. Yeah. Me too. Actually, I really this. It's weird. This weekend has really like reignited my. Passion, I'm like, I think. yeah, me too. Yeah. Because I've been like so chill for a while. I'm like, I'm fine. This is good enough. But now yeah. I'm like, there's a lot more I could do. Like, not just like for myself, but like for other people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I've had a lot of well, not a lot, but like a few less than optimum experiences at festivals. Yeah. <laughs> just because I get so nervous about them. Really? I mean, for like, yeah, for like, like I kind of for like weeks in advance. Uh, mm -hmm. Once I've signed up for them. I'll be like having sleepless nights and oh sort of waking up in a cold sweat and stuff. Uh, but this one, for some reason, it's just been really fun. That's and it's awesome. just been cool. And the workshops went really well, which they sometimes don't always go very well for me. Nice. But I found I think I've written like a really nice workshop that I could maybe tour for the next year or something. If anyone else will have me anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, I was just saying like this has really ignited my passion as well. Yeah. So yeah. We should uh, hit up some uke fests together yeah yeah <laughs> well it's a shame i'm well not a shame but like i'm back in england now so it makes it a bit harder like mitch I, we yeah. go way back to who was cool to fly me in but uh yeah i don't know if many others will fly me from england now but you never know you yeah know? yeah you are the ukulele teacher that is true i am at the moment <laughs> still the ukulele teacher yeah <laughs> so you've got two albums worth of material written yes yeah you're gonna go into a studio to record them yes or? yeah yeah i um I've got a little band formed back home. You have? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, actually, the uh, the guy below me plays drums. Yeah. So I asked if we could... Oh, really? What, like in your apartment or whatever? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, like, it's been me and a bass player and a drum, the, the drumist, and we'll go downstairs to his apartment and just practice in his bedroom. He's also studying to be a sound engineer, so he'll record all of our sessions, and, like, it's been a really nice that's, uh, so that's arrangement. Great. I feel like if most people found they were sharing a building with a drummer, it would just be a nightmare. <laughs> but for you, it's a great opportunity. You know? For me, yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's terrific. So, how much? Uh, how long is that going to take you? You think? I don't know. I hope. I hope I can get this done sooner than the last one. That's what I was hoping for the last one too, because I've made two now, so I understand the process. Um, I want to get it out. I'm going to say like I want to get it out early next year but i hope that that doesn't jinx me and yeah. like make it that's not long that's not long to do you know it's really soon but i think like i'd like to record this one and then just get that out and then get the next one out too because yeah. um i really love writing songs too but right like lately i haven't felt like the need to write them because i have such a backlog of right songs. you've got to kind of get them out into the world first <laughs> yeah 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 so maybe once those two are done, I can start really writing a lot again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what about like uh, more TV commissions or anything, you think? or More TV commissions? Yeah. You said? Yeah, yeah. I have like an ongoing relationship with that film composer. Is, okay. Is that what you mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. in terms of future work and stuff, I mean, is that something else you want to do? Yeah, Or are doing, sure. plan to do? Yeah. 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 Um, mm, it'd be great. Maybe this is like a very like a future, future dream, but to like write for, um, write songs for TV as well. Yeah. Like TV and film, like well, you're what Alan up. Menken does for Disney. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're building up your resume, you know, and... Um, yeah. 
I'm sure it'll happen. You know, I'm sure it'll happen. I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Cool. Okay. Well, Abby, thanks so much and best yeah. of luck. You know? Thank you for having me. Cool. My pleasure. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>well like i said at the midway point of the interview isn't it just great to see someone with so much talent and enthusiasm get some incredible opportunities and not just get the opportunities but really make the most out of them i just want to say another great big thank you to abby lyons for the interview and wish her the very best of luck in the future thank you guys for listening as well i'll be back next wednesday with another great interview for you and don't forget if you've listened this far please Send me your ukulele tales, the history of your ukulele. Send me photos, send me stories, send me information. I just want to hear about your ukuleles. And the best way to do that is on Facebook at The Ukulele Teacher, or you can email me at uteacher at grabyouryuke.com. Anyway, I'll be back again next Wednesday with another episode of Ukulele Tales for you. I've been John Atkins, and until next time, I love you all, and I wish you the best.